Join me as I take you around and explore the reimagined, the reinvented, the revamped Oceania Insignia cruise ship. I'm Gary Bambage. This is another of my tips for travelers. I'm in my cabin on Oceania Insignia. The ship went through a massive big refit and revamp, and I'm going to show you around some of the key highlights. Before we do that, let me talk a little bit about the ship. The Oceania Insignia was originally built right back in 1998 for Renaissance cruises. It became part of the fleet of Oceania in 2003. It went through a massive refit at the end of 2018 as part of the Oceania Next program. Insignia, it's a small ship. It holds just 698 passengers on lower berths. It has nine passenger decks, so it really does operate in the small ship category. So let's take a look at some of the key highlights, starting with the dining options. Dining is a really big part of Oceania Cruises, and onboard Insignia, in spite of the fact that it's a small ship, it actually has eight dining options. So let's take a look at them. First of all, you have the grand dining room. This is open for breakfast, for lunch and dinner. It's a magnificent room. It's open seated dining. You can sit at tables for two tables for one, whatever you want, whatever configuration you want. Big menus, lots of amazing food in here. One of the other popular restaurants is the Terrace. And this is a Terrace Cafe. It's the buffet restaurant. It's up on deck nine. It's open for breakfast, lunch and dinner. It also has an outside seating area, which is great if you're in great weather like I have been here in the Caribbean. And in the evenings, it'll often have themed nights for so Mexican, Italian. And here you can wear casual gear even at night. So if you want to wear shorts, you can wear shorts up here in the evening, whereas you do have to get dressed up for the main dining room. There are two specialty dining restaurants on board Insignia. The first of those is the Polo Grill, which is the steakhouse restaurant and magnificent steaks in here. Of course, you can also get seafood. They then have Toscana, which is the Italian restaurant. And again, two beautiful restaurants. These are included within the fare, so there's no charge for speciality dining. Other places that you can eat, well, you have the Wave Grill. This is on the pool deck and it has early morning breakfast and at lunchtime it's really popular. It's where you can get things like hamburgers, hot dogs, that kind of stuff at lunchtime. There's Baristas, which is just outside the main dining room. This is a coffee shop most of the time and all your specialty coffees are here. Serves very nice Ely coffee and also in the evenings it does also serve drinks as well. Afternoon tea is included. It's held every day around about four o'clock in the afternoon and that's held right up in Horizons, which is a big lounge up on deck 10. Then, of course, the eighth option is room service, room service included within the fare. So a big range of dining options available on board Insignia. The next thing I want to look at is the whole area of entertainment. Now, there's not huge amounts of entertainment on Insignia, again, being a small ship and there's not lots of formal entertainment. But the key entertainment is as follows. You have the Insignia Lounge which is where you'll have your enrichment lectures, you'll have your welcome cocktail parties, you might have some of the quizzes in here. And it's where every evening you have either the production, cast, the singers, dancers and band, or a guest artist performing. These are really popular shows. And again, perhaps because there's not huge amounts of entertainment overall, things like the enrichment lectures and the production shows, guest artists are really well attended in the Insignia Lounge. There's a casino. It's not a massive big casino, but it's pretty popular. Certainly on cruises I've been on Insignia before, the casinos are really popular. It's got uh, tables and it's got the slot machines as well. The other key area which I've included in entertainment is bars, because this is what a lot of people do in the evening is they socialize. Very beautiful bar. One of the popular bars, particularly before and after dinner, is Martini's, which is right next to the casino. And as you would expect, it does serve incredible cocktails here. A pianist will normally be playing in here during various times of the night. Up in the Horizons Lounge, which is right up on deck 10, here again it's a really popular place to meet after dinner, before dinner, and later in the evening after the show there'll be some dancing up here as well. So a really popular, sociable place to be. Linked to the lounge up here is a inside smoking lounge. A small smoking lounge is up here in Horizons as well. 
There are a couple of other bars around the place. So out on the pool deck, when it's normally the swimming time, you'll have a bar there. You also have a bar in the terrace cafe as well. So you can have drinks when you're having your meals. In terms of fitness and recreation, there's probably three key things. You have a spa, which is always popular as it is on a cruise ship. You have a fitness center and classes, and it's a pretty big fitness center. And then you also have a running and walking track up on deck 10. It always amazes me how popular this is. It's not a particularly big track, but it's right around the top of the swimming pool. It's actually really great when you have a sea day or you're sailing into port in the morning or out of port in the evening. Really, really popular running and walking track. In terms of enrichment, obviously you've got the lectures that I mentioned, but there's a couple of other things. There's a very beautiful space called the library, and it really is one of the hidden places. A lot of people don't really realize where it is up on deck 10, just near the two specialty restaurants. It's a sort of a U-shaped room, has a library, as the name would suggest, packed full of books. It's a really good spot to go to if you're looking for somewhere really quiet, because it is a really secret hidden space. Also, there's a card room, which is always very popular on cruises where people will go and play games and not surprisingly there'll be things like bridge organized in there. There's a small internet cafe as well, although with Wi-Fi around the ship, most people do tend to use Wi-Fi. On big longer voyages like the World Voyage, they have an area called Artist Loft, which is then used for enrichment and various crafts and, as the name would suggest, painting kind of exercises. On normal cruises, it's just an area with tables where people will go and play games, do things like jigsaws, that type of thing. On deck five, just before martinis, you have another area where you have shops. So you have sort of a jewelry watch shop and a clothes merchandise shop. So obviously that's something to entertain yourself. And also what's really nice in this area is you then have often in the evening, you'll have a string quartet playing classical music and it's quite a popular spot for people to hang out. Down on deck four, you have down a really good sort of featured atrium staircase. You have guest services, the destination services, and this is where you'll, if you're on a itinerary like the Caribbean, you'll have the sales advisor to help with sales when you're in the different port. And you'll also have the concierge down here. When it comes to accommodation on Insignia, there's a vast range you have inside cabins, you have ocean view cabins, but the bulk of cabins are what I was staying in, which is a balcony cabin. So I was actually in a concierge level cabin, which is on deck seven. Concierge really just means you get some extra benefits and perks in terms of you have a concierge, you have priority embarkation, disembarkation, some free laundry, a few bits and pieces like that. The cabins on board, because it's a small ship, are relatively cozy, I guess you could describe them. In the revamp, the decor has been significantly improved, really, really comfortable, phenomenally comfortable beds, nice little balcony area with nice furniture. One of the big pluses is in the bathroom, they've added glass doors to the shower in the revamp and the refit, and this for me is a really big plus, and I do think it actually makes the bathroom feel a little bit more open. I think the change to Insignia through Oceania Next is dramatic. I think the ship has really been significantly improved. It does feel much more premium. It does feel more luxurious. Just the quality and the look and the feel and the style, I think has been dramatically improved from my experiences of cruising before the revamp. If you want to find out more about Oceania, I have other videos about Oceania with lots of tips, advice, and of course, loads of other videos about cruising. So why don't you actually go and watch another one of those right now?